Hello and welcome to Potter Watch from Page to Screen, episode 3. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Lucy. And today we'll be looking at The Letters from No One, The Keeper of the Keys and Diagon Alley. We pick up from last time. Harry and the Dursleys have just gotten back from the zoo and Harry has now been locked in his cupboard with the promise of no meals. But before we begin, we're going to start with a new section called Out of the Sorting Hat to make it a bit HP. Um, (laughs) We're each going to draw a random question from the hat. Um, One will be Harry Potter related and one will be completely random. Um, So today I will be drawing a random one and Lucy will be drawing a Harry Potter one. So do you want to, do you want to start? I've got a jar of folded up post-it notes. (laughs) I'm just doing random number generator because we are the internet generation. So (laughs) might as well make use of it. Oh, okay. Number one. I'm not going to look. Oh no, that's a Harry Potter one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this one is the first question I wrote because it's number one, so it's pretty straightforward. My question is, which Harry Potter character are you most similar to? And I thought maybe maybe we should try and answer about each other first. Ah, okay, okay. So I, I should have given this some thought because I have the question prepared, but <laughs> now I need to think about it. Um, For you. Oh, I don't even know who for and I me. I think we could do. I think we could do um, Wizarding World characters. So it doesn't have to be a character from the book. It could also be from Fantastic Beasts. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Would it be really egotistical for me to say <laughs> that I think I'm most like Harry? <laughs> no, I because Harry. <laughs> well, I was about to say Harry is an amazing, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is Harry is still. He's a not normal a perfect, person. Yeah, yeah, he is a very normal person. And you said um, in the in episode one in the introduction that that's why you love the books because you relate to Harry. Yeah, I do relate to Harry a lot. Like in his schoolwork, he's like, well, I'm I'm not great, but I'm I'm all right. And that's yeah. how I see myself in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, for you, mm. I feel like in some ways. I'm a bit of Ron. Yeah. I do love my food and I have yeah. quite a big extended family. That's true, you do have um, like a massive extended family. <laughs> <laughs> um, although, maybe I'm like, oh, what's Ron and Hermione? Um, Rose? Rose? Oh, Is yeah. that Ron and Hermione's child? Because I feel like I'm like a mix of Ron, Ron and Hermione. Hermione. So yeah, I do agree I'll with be that Rose. because. I don't feel like you're quite as mean as Ron can be sometimes. Mm. Yeah. But I do think that you have quite like a a dark sense of humour sometimes. Yeah. Like a Saki kind of sense of Mm humour. And I just love food. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And that's perfect because we're Ron and Harry. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's so (laughs) good. I didn't (laughs) realise. I didn't even notice. Oh, that's good. Okay, do you agree that I am like Harry? Yeah, I, I'm i trying to think of other characters that you'll like, but I yeah. I do really think you're Harry. I mean, I'd I'll like the, to um, say like someone like Luna or something, but I really yeah. don't think I'm like I any, love any characters, Luna. But yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't come out with nearly as many um, cool sayings as Luna, because yeah. I feel like Harry's just friends. kind of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You kind of hear his <laughs> thoughts mean. and it's just like Yeah, he's ah. just a bit like <laughs> You don't you don't have to feel like you're insulting me. I feel okay. like I'm a highly average human being. Yeah, he's and just I'm a okay very normal that. person who kind of yeah. like falls into not very normal situations, yeah. isn't he? Um, yeah. and that's I mean that's the plot of the book really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He and I and I think in some re, in some ways he is that way. So so a lot of people can put themselves can into Harry. Him. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And then I think also Ron and Hermione are their kind of archetype best friends, aren't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I I had a girl in my science classes who was my Hermione and just taught me the whole course and <laughs> like the exam breakfasts, and she she saved my science exams. So oh nice. One of my teachers would have been that with science. Mm. I got yeah. an F in my mock exam. 
and they ended up with um she at, when i got my results she was like, oh, you could have taken the higher exam and gotten an A, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> because I took the lower exams and when I was yeah. taking exams, taking the lower exams means that even if you got like 100%, you mm -hmm. could only reach C level. Yeah, no, that's the same now. Whereas I was doing higher, so I either got a C or I failed completely and just yeah. didn't get a GCSE. Yeah. Which is good, but also kind of scary if you're not yeah. good at chemistry like me. <laughs> That's true. Okay, let's do let's do mine. So, if you could have any one ability from any franchise, what Ooh. would it be? Oh, and I immediately know the answer. To my own <laughs> okay, go on. You go first then. I would be the Avatar from Avatar: Last Airbender. Okay. So, do you know what that is? Not really. Okay, I mean... so <laughs> so. Um, I nodded and I was like, ah, it makes perfect sense, but I've never watched Avatar last time. Anyway, so. You need to. Okay. It's, I know it's about the Blue the Arrow. Best cartoon series Is that I've what ever you watched. want? The Blue Arrow? You want the Blue Arrow on your face? Yeah, the one with the Blue okay. Arrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the so only power I know he of. can do what's called bending, which is kind of manipulating the elements. It's kind of like using the force in Star Is it kind Wars. of like Skullduggery Pleasant? Because I've I have no that. idea what that is. Okay. Well, one of them is a very useful one. It's, it is like using the force in Star okay, Wars, but, but on the elements. With so one certain, element. Yeah, there's like that four kingdoms like with the four doesn't. elements. Um, okay. And usually if you're born into one of these kingdoms, you can only bend, um, as they call it, um, fire, air, water or earth mm -hmm. singularly. Yeah. Um, oh. Or there are people who can't bend at all. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking of someone who's really inflexible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must sound odd. <laughs> um, or, like, but the avatar can do all four. Right, okay. That is really cool. Yeah. It's so cool. You have to watch it. It's <laughs> okay. so good. I think I've seen it um, online, so I'll... I think it's on Netflix oh, right now. It? Yeah, okay. I'll have a look. You have um, to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what mine would be. I feel like... You can pick a wizard if can you I, want. Can I just be a wizard? Yeah. yeah, you can pick a wizard. I know that's a bit predictable. No! Well, well see, uh, the other kind of... Super, when people say, what superpower would you want? I yeah. think of things like um, uh, apparition yes. or uh, teleportation, which obviously yeah. wizards can do. And to be able it to be like It just encompasses a, all of the things. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I would love to be able to control time, like freeze it and travel in it and make it go faster. But um, I feel like if you were a wizard, you could do that as well. Um, yeah, that's true with the time turner, although not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, um, yeah, I mean, that's but, why I yeah. choose Avatar, because um, with air powers, you can run at basically like the speed of light. That's um, cool. So it's basically apparating that's really um, cool yeah um, yeah i would also love to be like elsa <laughs> yes yeah and with water be... you can also do ice manipulation right yeah so elsa <laughs> hmm. yeah i feel like it's it's a little boring but i'd just be a witch you could no go to i Hogwarts. was really but do cool, i only actually. do i only have the powers of a witch or am i part of the wizarding world you only have the powers uh, you're not like harry potter doesn't exist you just uh, inherit no. okay powers. you know what no no i wouldn't want to be a witch and go to Hogwarts. <laughs> that would suck okay um i'll just be elsa that's pretty fun okay i like that <laughs> or I like no that. i take that back i would be violet from the incredibles or i'd, I'd have Ooh. her powers i was a huge violet fan yes she, and her design is so like sleek even though yeah. like you wouldn't look like her but still yeah. i do but think in my you head actually, I'd be her. yeah i do think you actually look quite like violet that is the best compliment i've ever received in my <laughs> i i based my personality off violet from the incredibles when i was a kid <laughs> i loved her she was the reason i started wearing headbands oh um. <laughs> oh okay that explains a lot yeah <laughs> Okay. Should we, um, so you're Violet, I'm Ang from Avatar Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. What a duo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We'd make quite the team. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so let's 
start with the letters from no one. So we've um, just vanished the glass and the snake has escaped. So if you've only just tuned into this episode, we are doing um, differences between the films and movies. So the first difference we see in this scene slash chapter um, is his punishment. Um, so we're not, we don't really see many details of his punishment in the um, in the film. Uh, the question is, so in the book it says longest ever punishment. And the question is, how long was he not allowed out of his mm. cupboard? Yeah, I I think the the films show that Harry is not being treated well, but, but they not... just don't they don't emphasise how like he's abused yes, by the Darcy's. He is abused. It's, he's yeah yeah, um, and I don't think the films quite because they're a fun family wizard movie. Um, yeah, like they don't you don't really want to see that. <laughs> yeah, they don't really go into it quite as heavily. Yeah. Um, okay, so Dudley's birthday is the 23rd of June. Um, and I think, do we just know that from J.K. Rowling being yes. like, oh yeah, it's the 23rd of June. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is how we know a lot of information, unfortunately. Mm. I wish there was a, I don't know, book anyway. I guess we yeah. have seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dudley's birthday is the 23rd of June. And in the book, it reads, by the time he was allowed out of his cupboard again, he being Harry, the summer holidays had already started and Dudley had already broken his new cine camera, crushed his remote control aeroplane and, first time on his racing bike, knocked down Mrs. Fig as she crossed Privet Drive on her crutches. Which is what we mentioned last episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, maybe it was all a ruse. Anyway. Mm. Um, summer holidays in England usually start around the 20th of July. I know this summer um, I'm breaking up on the 10th, I think, of July. Oh, interesting. Um, so, yeah, like mid-July. Um, but it might be earlier because when J.K. Rowling was at school, um, usually schools broke up earlier. Yeah, so I asked my mum about this because my mum is the same age-ish as J.K. Rowling, and in my mum's day, um, although she did grow up in Leicester, her school's holidays started at 20th of June, which <laughs> if if Dudley's birthday <laughs> is the 23rd, then you'd have to like do negative punishments, <laughs> so that doesn't really work. No. Um, but yeah, so possibly earlier, but with Dudley's birthday, which we talked about this before we did the pod we've recorded the podcast um this may be her just saying oh yeah his birthday is 23rd <laughs> of june um yeah. without really thinking after she wrote this mm -hmm. but just knowing that it had to be like mid early summer yeah yeah but if we go on that as like absolute canon at this point mm -hmm. surely the English summer school holidays start at least like I would say a week or two after. Yeah, so it, it's um, it's been a few weeks. Yeah. I would say at least. Yeah, me um, too. This this year in Surrey, summer term ends on the twenty second of July, according to their county council website, um, <laughs> nice. and according to a lot of other county council websites. Uh, in nineteen ninety one, most schools broke up in kind of late June, some in early July. Mm. So yeah, it's been. A week maybe two yeah so it's a couple of weeks and then he had to have enough time to um break all of his gifts <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true in that short amount of time yeah so that means like a month maybe yeah and then i added that harry would be great <laughs> at social distancing <laughs> yeah because we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Although, does he really have anyone he'd want to see anyway? True. True. <laughs> He's oh. like fine with social distancing at this point. I just, I just thought, this is a complete um, tangent, but Harry Potter is alive and well at the moment. Yeah, as we speak. So, if, if so, well, I don't know why I say if. <laughs> he exists. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does exist. No, but yeah. in terms of the canon of the story, you know, like, I'm just imagining the Potters coping with um, the <gasps> lockdown. Oh, yeah. I, I never thought about that. Because he's the like, same age as your mum, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, they were born the same year. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. I wonder how they're dealing. Imagine yeah. to deal with, I mean, dealing with kids during this, but magical kids. Yeah, and then they would have to all be sent back from Hogwarts to home. Yeah. Oh, oh anyway. that would suck. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if school was normal, then maybe yeah. they wouldn't think it would suck. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, he has he gets punished. And then mm-hmm. Dudley... Um, they they introduce like oh they're getting ready for school. Um, Dudley's um, getting his new uniform, and Dudley um, is trying to get Harry like ready. <laughs> the kind of cousin he did he is. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get Harry ready for um, school by suggesting. And now I'm going to read from the chapter. Um, they stuffed people's heads down the toilet first day at Stonewall, he told Harry. Want to come upstairs and practice? Because at this point, obviously, Harry doesn't know that he's going to Hogwarts. So he thinks he's going to Stonewall High. So Harry responds. No thanks, said Harry. The poor toilet's never had anything as horrible as your head down it. It might be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I love that. I love oh. that bit. It's so good, and there's so many instances where Harry, and we'll probably, I don't want to mention them all now, because we'll probably mm-hmm. cover them if yeah. we are able to carry on with this mm-hmm. in later episodes. But I wanted to do like a quick comparison of like, why why on earth they omit that like great part of Harry's character? Yeah. Because I feel like, as we said in our questions section out of the sorting hat harry is quite a plain character so he's not got much going for him <laughs> but this is a really interesting part of his character like yeah. he's funny he's sarky he's witty. yeah he is witty yeah, he's very quick yeah and um <laughs> and i wrote in the doc and in, in our shared google doc and his hair sucks too <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. i'm like hair gel exists like yeah. I get why they couldn't use the contact lenses for those who mm-hmm. don't know Harry. Uh, Harry, <laughs> Daniel <laughs> was allergic to yeah. contact lenses, so that's fair enough. Although but they like, do, um, they are used in in the first scene that they filmed, which is the last scene of the first movie. Um, they used contact lenses, and that's why his eyes are really red and watery. Not yeah, because he's a good actor, because he was allergic to contact lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some acting as well. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I also um, Emma Watson has the oh, the buck teeth, teeth as well. Yeah, I I knew that. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't know the Daniel Radcliffe one. Yeah, interesting. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, hair gel exists. Come on, because in yeah. the third one, his hair is like on point. His hair is great. I think Harry is the third is my favorite film. Yeah, and I think, for a lot um, of reasons, the third is one of my favourites as yeah. well. I think Harry in the third film is, is Harry the best. Yeah. yeah. To be fair to to Daniel, um, most of the sassy Harry is just the writing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really think that Daniel is, isn't given a lot to work with. No. Um, because actually, Daniel like reads the Harry Potter books like, yeah. well, he read them at least when they were filming mm-hmm. really extensively to mm-hmm. try and understand the character yeah and actually in the in the first film there are some i feel like there is some subtle sassy harry but it's yeah. more sassy daniel radcliffe because i've watched a lot of um kind of archival behind the scenes footage and he's always trying to play pranks on people yeah. laughing and like he's it's really really annoying because funny. daniel is more like harry than how <laughs> he than... portrays it in the exactly <laughs> exactly yeah and yeah, I was, I, when they said like, oh yeah, he is Harry, I was like, really? And then the more I watch him outside of Harry Potter, the more I agree with them. Yeah, I agree. And I was trying to work out why. And so I, I looked up who did the screenplay and his name is um, Steve Cloves. And he did everything apart from the fifth, which apparently he really regrets now. But he, oh. um, he was just a bit, 
I can't remember what he said, but I think it was just because he was a bit overworked mm. um, at that point, and he found number four really hard, so he yeah. wanted a bit of a break, but yeah. he regrets it now. And he did work with J.K. Rowling, and she said mm -hmm. that she's told him more about Harry Potter than anybody else. And I just, I, I just wanted to, like, I wanted to put a suggestion out there, like, was it important to to get rid of Harry's sassiness? Like, did maybe, they want um, him to be maybe. more of a blank slate? Yeah, maybe for the sake of a film, they didn't want it to come across as being mean. I guess so. Because I feel like it's easier in a book for it to, well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe they wanted him to be more of like a, a stereotypical hero. Yeah, Rather than true. like a teenage boy. Yeah. I don't know why I emphasise boy, because girls boy. are sassy too. But <laughs> <laughs> um, he was like, he was a child. Right. Um, I guess it was just, those lines aren't essential. Yeah. So you might as well cut them for time. Yeah. <laughs> there might not be any reason to it all. Yeah. It's just because they didn't need it. Yeah. That's probably what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. <laughs> okay, and then um, they got the post. Um, Dudley is actually asked to get the post, which always surprised me every time I read it. Mm. Um, but I was thinking about this. I think um, I think it's possible that Vernon is almost asking Dudley to get the post as like a test of whether he will be Ooh. assertive over Harry, yeah. like, or even over over his father actually, and say Ooh, no, I make like Harry that. get it. Yeah, so it's I less like of that a, a I want you to get the post, more of yeah, like testing him, yeah. see if he knows that. He I like to get that. Post. Very nice. I like that a lot. Um, sorry, I just <laughs> repeat that <laughs> over and over again. Um, so, and then he makes Harry get it, of course. So mm -hmm. he's passed the test, in your opinion. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, the only and then, one in his life, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, we have a very odd addition in the film. Dudley appears to know about Hogwarts because he mm. stares in bewilderment at Harry alongside his parents. And I just, I wanted to ask, like, what benefit to the film does this have? I think possibly, I not a mistake, but I think it may have just been like a, oh, go on, like, look worried, you know? Um, or possibly just... Um, him being confused that Harry was getting a letter oh, rather than true. knowing who it's from. And also it's a wax sealed envelope of parchment with green ink writing. So I feel like any eleven year old would be maybe um confused about that. It's yeah. not because they're very normal people. Yeah, because you don't have the dialogue post. of like, why yeah. would anybody be writing to you? Do you want to write, read what you wrote in the Oh <laughs> so <laughs> He, in the book, um, he's told to get out, he's told he can't see the letter, um, and Dudley obviously is furious that he's being ignored, because that's very unusual for him. So he gave his father a sharp tap on the head with his smelting stick. <laughs> well, uh, do you want to just give some context of what the smelting stick is? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, his smelting stick is a stick that he is given as part of the uniform pretty much which school. is hilarious um and it's given to the boys at the school to encourage them to hit each other with it yeah so i suppose he's <laughs> a fast learner um yeah. <laughs> yeah he'll really ace this school <laughs> yeah. so he's using this stick to hit his father no a sharp tap on the head that's what gets me it's not like a whack yeah, it's a sharp, a sharp tap, tap. Yeah, um, to try and get his attention, but it doesn't work because they're just absolutely um, flabbergasted. Yeah, yeah, just terrified of this letter. Okay, and then there's another addition in the film um, where instead of like showing, and I, and I'll go more into this in more detail, showing all of like what I call the great letter fiasco, they show more and more owls coming onto the car and onto the house and like around yeah. Privet Drive. Yeah. Um which I really I really like um that that is the like 
I can see them thinking like, oh, we can't add all of these bits in because it would be a pain to edit together and it would, it's not necessary. Yeah. How do we represent the magic, like, overtaking? Encroaching. Yeah. yeah, encroaching, overtaking their lives. And I really like that they use owls for it because they're, mm -hmm. they're the ones doing the letters. Yeah. Doing the letters. <laughs> doing the letters. <laughs> Delivering them. Writing it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although it's a cat doing the letters, so not that much weirder. Well, <laughs> she... It's Professor McGonagall who yeah. writes the letters. <laughs> she, I don't think she transforms into a cat to write the letters. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe just to give her a bit of a test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, in, in the book, this is where Harry gets um, Dudley's second bedroom. So after he reads... Well, no, after they read the... Uh, what's it called the address <laughs> on the front of the letter saying like cupboard under the stairs mm -hmm. vernon's like has this really smart idea which actually for him is probably quite smart to be yeah. fair for him um <laughs> is that oh like we'll avoid it if we move harry into the second bedroom mm. yeah or possibly even because they think they're being watched by these wizards so yeah. maybe it was even just to test that theory to yeah see if it to yeah and i think also maybe in some way it's um to be like oh oh no do they think that we're treating him badly yeah yeah um so now they're like a bit conscious about mm -hmm. the fact that they're being watched which maybe they weren't yeah. so much before right mm, interesting I love in the second film, I just put this in, purely out of the goodness of our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> the fan says he delivers that line so well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Harry gets to the second bedroom here. Um, and Harry asks, why, said Harry. Don't ask questions, snapped his uncle. Because um, they, they really emphasise a lot in this book how they don't like Harry asking anything. No. Um, yeah. Not even they don't like not about curiosity magic. or imagination. Yeah. yeah. Um, which again, I think, would have been a nice inclusion into how like mm. how extreme the Dursleys yeah. were. Yeah. So, so it only takes Harry one trip to move to second bedroom with all his belongings. So, so sad. I just thought, how much does Harry own, and what does he own? Yeah. Because he can carry up in one trip. Yeah. So it can't like, be much. Yeah, so it it semi annoys me in the films that they um but not so much because I like the imagery of it that he has those um night toys mm -hmm. on yeah. the horses. Um I feel like maybe they he could have gotten them from like second hand from Dudley. Yeah. Because I don't see Dudley playing with that kind of thing. No. I think um, he would consider it consider them boring toys yeah it's not kind of yeah technology. so yeah maybe that but i think mm. maybe just his clothes yeah would it be do you think you'd have to like take his bedding or would there already be bedding on it i would imagine the second bedroom already has bedding yeah so yeah i guess it's just like probably has a couple of pairs of jeans and a few t-shirts yeah it must be heavy because they're more. dudleys <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, okay, so so then uh, comes the great letter fiasco. So I'm just going to list all the ways that <laughs> the wizards or from Professor McGonagall or the owls, I don't know who is like doing this, but whoever is doing this, I'm going to list what they do to get this boy his letter. Um, and like what Vernon does to avoid the letters. Yeah. Um, so Harry steps on Uncle Vernon's face, who has been <laughs> sleeping under the letterbox in an attempt to get the letters before Harry does. So they both have the same idea. Mm -hmm. Although but... Harry plans to go right out to the street corner. Does he? Yeah, he says he's going to meet the um, postman on Outside. the corner. Outside? Oh, um... I so somehow didn't read that. <laughs> oh, that's interesting, but then... Uncle Vernon is in a sleeping bag. Yeah. He's been there <laughs> so, all night. Yeah. Waiting for the post to fall on his face, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
which mm, Uncle Vernon is just slowly going more mad. Yeah. Uh, in the film and the book, they nail up the letter book letterbox, but um, in the book, he's trying to knock in the nail with a piece of fruit cake, and uh, <laughs> we have the added piece of information that he doesn't go to work, which is mm. quite significant because he loves his job. Yeah. Letters are pushed under the door, slotted through the sides, and forced through the window of the downstairs toilet. <laughs> um, so then Uncle Vernon boards up all the cracks around the front and back doors. And it, it's detailed here that he does this whilst humming tiptoe through the tulips and jumping at small noises. Which paints such a specific picture yeah. in my mind. Yeah. I can I can see and hear exactly what he's doing. Yes, yeah. I mean, have you ever heard "Tiptoe Through the Tulips"? Mm -hmm. So yeah. So if anyone who hasn't, it's um, it's sung by this um, singer called Tiny Tim, and he has this really high, core sort of frilly kind of voice. And it's yeah. If you've heard it, it even it adds so much more to the image <laughs> of him just going more and more mad. The letters are then hidden inside each of the 24 eggs that their milkman had to deliver through the window. Through the window. <laughs> He's very confused. Yeah. Um, this, this is in a deleted scene. It was deleted from the UK theatrical release, but there are some other versions that keep it in. And I think also usually when it's on TV, it has this scene of I haven't it seen have this one. The eggs being deleted, uh, being deleted, <laughs> <laughs> being delivered, um, but it just shows um, Aunt Petunia is trying to make a she's trying to make a cake or an omelette or something, and she's cracking open these eggs, and it's just um, letters inside the eggs. Oh, I feel like I have seen that maybe just once because I can't really yeah. remember it, but that's ringing a bell. Yeah, I've only seen it a couple of mm. times. Oh, that's cool that they... I mean, they should really... Inc they should bring out extended versions. I don't know why they... No, oh, they, they could make so much money. could talk money. about this for hours. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if they did that as well and re-showed them in the cinemas. Yeah. Imagine how much money... Well, I mean, I guess they're doing fine at the moment. Yeah. Maybe when it's like an anniversary or something, they'll... Yeah do it but um and nice. then uh similar to the film they do come pelting through the fireplace but this is not like it doesn't like fill up the Calming. room right, yeah, yeah. As, as it does in the film but um i really like what they do in the film with harry like dancing on the <laughs> table trying to buy yeah. get the letter and then to avoid the letters the dursleys go to loads of different places <laughs> Um, Vernon pulls out half of his moustache um, in the process, extreme. yeah. Um, <laughs> but in the film, they just go straight to the hut on the rock. So again, I'm going to mm. detail where all these places are. But yeah, in the film, they just go straight to the hut. Mm. Dudley gets scolded in the process of all of this happening. And I wanted to see, wanted your opinion on like whether this was the first time he'd ever gotten scolded i think maybe it wasn't the first time he was ever told off but maybe the first time he hadn't got um his yeah. way immediately yeah. afterwards or it hadn't been this severe you know maybe he'd been told off but then um his parents were immediately after like oh don't worry dudders you know? yeah um but i think in this case he's being scolded yeah. and it stays that way. I'm trying to find I think that's what, what specifically I was referencing. He does, he tells like Dudley to get out. Maybe that's what I was referring to. Um, he says um, to Harry, go to your cupboard. I mean, your bedroom. He wheezed at Harry. Dudley, go. Just go. Maybe that's what I was referencing, but maybe I was referencing something later on. I don't know, but he is scolded mm. quite a lot in this. Um, yeah. They do. They drive for an incredibly long time, um, trying to avoid these letters. So they, 
he tells them all to like get the bare essentials dudley tries to like pack his massive tv mm -hmm. um and several other crazy things um and they eventually convince him to just bring like the bare essentials like a couple of changes of clothes um they go on a really long drive <laughs> taking sharp turnings often every time they take a sharp turning <laughs> uncle vernon goes shake him off shake him off <laughs> <laughs> i think that's one of my favorite lines in yeah in the whole, the whole seven book series <laughs> me too mm -hmm. yeah, me too absolutely <laughs> Also, um, I, I forgot to add this um, earlier, but Dudley says that um, this was the worst day oh, yes. of his life. The quote is, They didn't stop to eat or drink all day. By nightfall, Dudley was howling. He'd never had such a bad day in his life. He was hungry, he'd missed five television programmes, and he'd wanted, to, he'd wanted to see, and he'd never gone so long without blowing up an <laughs> alien on his computer. And I just thought it was interesting to compare um, Dudley's worst day to what would be Harry's yeah. worst day of his life, um, and just the the difference the difference between yeah, the kind of like lives that they perhaps had. Harry's worst day probably, if we count like all of the books, probably would be Sirius's mm -hmm. death. Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe. I guess so. Um, or like Battle of Hogwarts, yeah. although he won. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Maybe the best. That's true. That was the day he defeated Voldemort. Yeah. Um, so, although also, I feel like Harry's the best day of Harry. Did, does it say that the best day of Harry's life was when he went to the zoo with Dudley, or just that it was a really good day? It was the best day that he'd had at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, and like. That's not that much better than what they're doing at the moment. The more Dudley's worst. Right, yeah. that, that's what... Yeah, that's, what that's true, thought. that's true. It's like, I I think of like, um when Harry, Ron and Hermione... Hermi Hermione? <laughs> Hermione? <laughs> Hermione go and um, do like uh, the camping um in number seven. Mm, um, yeah. And Ron is like moaning all the time yeah. being hungry and harry's just kind of all right mm. with it because he's like well i've been starved half of my childhood yeah. um like he he is starved regularly mm -hmm. in these books yeah um so like i'd imagine he's starved regularly before these books take place um so yeah that's that is interesting Oh, and I was just wanted to say that I'm I'm kind of mad that they didn't put this in the film, the shake him off, shake him yeah. off, because <laughs> um, I feel like he would would pull that off perfectly. Yeah. Um, it would be a bit of a weird scene just to like add it That's in. That's true. I feel like in again, I we keep saying in the context of the film, it would have felt a bit strange. And kind yeah. of changed the. I, I do quite love the tempo of the letters arrive. They're crazy, and then we're going away, far away, where they can't find us. And then of course, yeah. And then they, it's just hot on the rock. Yeah, exactly. And it's like what? <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, we're going away yeah. somewhere, and you think, oh, maybe a nice hotel. Oh no, not a nice hotel. <laughs> I think it's yeah. almost comical. I quite like it, but yeah. I do also love this section of the book. Mm. So speaking of hotels, they <laughs> nice. stay in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but not a nice hotel. <laughs> oh. um, they eat like, well, I guess it doesn't really say but, whether yeah. it's nice or not. It's just a hotel. Um, um, they have like, what is it? Tinned tomatoes. Why tomato soup? Cold tomato soup would be better than cold tinned tomatoes. I quite agree. I found it now. So it says. Um, they ate stale cornflakes and cold tin tomatoes on toast for breakfast the next oh. day. Which I'm like, did they eat that in their room? Did Probably. they? Oh no, they had oh. them at the, uh, yeah, at their table at the hotel. So it must not have been a very no, nice hotel. That's a good point. Okay. Um, yeah, because it says the owner of the hotel came over to their table with another letter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hotel is in Cokeworth. Oh, what is Cokeworth? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder. Cokeworth, my dear friend, <laughs> is where 
Petunia and Lily and Snape. (gasps) (laughs) Snape grew up. Wow. That's very cool. I only just learned recently. Yeah. Yeah. And my mind was blown. Um, And I'm like, why on earth? Does Vernon go here? Does Vernon... Like, does he know? I feel that like... That this is where she grew up? She'd cut all ties with her family by the time yeah. they got married. It's like an awfully massive coincidence. I guess so. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It, it, yeah, it's not the best place to go. Is, um... No, that's not... It's not a wizarding community, is it? No. No, it's a muggle community because yeah. um, Snape is half yeah. And also, there aren't really... I mean, there aren't any full wizarding villages besides Hogsmeade, right? Uh, and... Oh no, Godric's Hollow isn't full, is no, it? it's like... But it's still a wizarding community. It's heavily populated yeah. with wizards. Yeah. So yeah, I found that interesting. Mm. Um, it's very cool. The other, the other places that I go to are <laughs> the middle of a forest, a ploughed field, halfway across a suspension bridge, and at the top of a multi-storey car park. <laughs> At these places, Uncle Vernon gets out of the car, looks around, shakes his head, and gets back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they are very non-magical places. Yes, So that's he's true. on the right track. Yeah. Um, um, that's true. And I feel like um, this is quite a smart move on Vernon's part. Like, for a muggle's mind, yeah. like, this is probably what I would do. If I was scared and trying to avoid these I guess people, so, yeah. go to like completely random yeah. place. Um, Dudley's line of "Dudley's gone mad, hasn't he?" <laughs> um, was here rather than um, in Privet Drive. Yeah. And another thing is that in the book, I feel like there's more um, subtle, there's more build up to him kind of just going bonkers. Um, yeah, there's... in the film, it's like yeah. Mad. Which which is fine because of again because of time, but I like the yeah. subtle the subtle signs like hammering with a fruitcake as he said earlier and <laughs> yeah. he spreads marmalade his on his newspaper. Um, yeah, and yeah, I just think it's a lot of things like that that it's just really it's just funny, isn't it? You know? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so then uh, they what you don't see in the film when they. Uh, how they get to the hut on the rock mm. is that they use the rowing boat of a toothless old man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love those little details from J.K. Rowling. Um, she paints such a such a vivid picture mm-hmm. without using many words yeah. at all. Um, Vernon got rations <laughs> for the hut on the rock, which included a packet of cri- crisps and a banana each. <laughs> Lovely rations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, very long lasting and energizing. Yeah. Well, I guess bananas actually isn't a bad call, but. Yeah. Just but a banana. Bananas, but like one each. Yeah. How, yeah. Lo- how, how long, long do you, do you think, think that they're going to stay ha- there? Oh, is that what you just said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how long they were planning. Probably. But he was nuts oh, wow. at this point. Yeah. So. That's true. And didn't he say that he had like a shotgun as yeah. well? Because Hagrid, he ties that up in a. Oh, Spoilers. <laughs> in a second. Um, I also wanted to ask you, who do you think Harry thought the letters were being sent by? I I don't know. I mean, doesn't it say somewhere that Harry's like, who's sending all these letters? Yeah, I think so. And um, I think, <laughs> I mean, um, this doesn't say a very good thing about me because I think I'm like Harry, but I don't think he thought about it much That's at all. That's true. I think he was just like, like, just utterly bewildered. Mm. Like, um, but he must have thought about it at some point. Because yeah, it's been a you while. You do have a point. On that long car journey yeah. with nothing to do. That must have been yeah. what he was thinking about. Do you think he he did kind of dream, like, maybe... Maybe it's something cool. Like maybe it's one of my long lost relatives. I think that's probably. Does he know at this point that he has no other family? Maybe he. Well, I mean, he knows his parents. I think he suspects that he has no other family. But I think at this point, maybe he's like, oh, maybe this is some somebody that they haven't told me about. Like a friend of, like like serious, like a friend of his parents. Yeah, 
They mean like also is kind of scary because they know where he is. Like they're like stalking. That's him. true. <laughs> yeah, at this point. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's true. Maybe he's maybe yeah. he's also scared. Yeah. I never I never think about it that way, but because like in the Muggle world, knowing if that you've changed rooms, yeah. you'd have to like be outside yeah. of the house constantly. That would be really creepy. Yeah. Ooh, Good job, it's I just, just McGonagall. <laughs> yeah, and it's just the trace. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah, less creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. So, moving on to the next section Keeper of the Keys. Hagrid arrives. <laughs> knocks Yay! down. Does he knock down? Yeah, in the book, he also does, like, the door falls he does. down. Um, yeah, and after he does. he does this in the film, he says, Sorry about that. But in the book, he <laughs> says, couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. Um, <laughs> I love the timing of sorry about that. Yeah. It's so much, like, as we keep saying, like, each version is appropriate for the, um, for the medium that mm-hmm. it's in. Because, um, like, the timing of him, like, slamming the door back and going, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... So funny. Yeah, it is very well timed. And I also wanted to point out that um, Mon- McGonagall has also obviously learned to trust Hagrid in the last 10 years because the last time we know, we read about Hagrid in the book, McGonagall is like questioning Dumbledore's judgment yeah. like, um, oh, what does she say? You really? Oh, um, I mean, this is the film, but she says you think it wise to trust to trust Hagrid, Hagrid with something as important as this. I don't know if it's the same yeah. in the book, but well, but it's probably. the same kind of yeah. That's the thing. Gist. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I'm like, that's really a nice kind of yeah. thing to add that she yeah. sends Hagrid. Or I mean, maybe it's not her. I think it is. I think it is Dumbledore who sends him. But but she mm. probably would have had to agree with it, considering she's kind of head of letters, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's really nice. It's also yeah. him asking for a cup of tea. It's another mention of tea <laughs> fixing a problem. Which yeah. I find it so funny that well, he says it's not been an easy journey, but he's flown through a horrendous storm in the middle of the night. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, ah, we- I'll have a cup of tea. You know, <laughs> yeah, like why doesn't he ask for like whiskey? Exactly, yeah. Although he does yeah. have his um, bottle of amber liquid, doesn't he? So yeah, it was sorted yeah. And unknown amber liquid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very I mean, like different. I'm not condoning the drinking of alcohol to deal with your problems, but like that's what a normal person, like a regular yeah. person, would do. Is like immediately like I need a drink. <laughs> I feel like do. after flying through a torrential rain to reach a hut. On a rock. A bit of whiskey. Tea would be quite warming. You know. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Tea would be, like, comforting, cosy. Yeah. yeah. In the book as well, Hagrid knew who Harry was immediately. He says to Dudley, mm. budge up, you great lump. <laughs> <laughs> Which is <laughs> interesting phrasing. It's so judgmental. <laughs> um... In the in the book, like especially when he's self conscious about being a giant, like being half yeah. giant. Oh, I didn't think so about that. He's so judgmental. Do you Pardon? think? Uh, I said I, I didn't think about him being conscious of being a giant, literally being big. But that's very true. I guess like he's not he's not fat, although he's portrayed as kind of portly in the yeah. film. But he's portrayed. But as still, he's quite conscious of his appearance. Robust in the book. Yeah, and so it's like <laughs> he's like a bit of a pot coin. Do you think back here. possibly though he's heard stories from because he loves Harry, even though he's never talked to him, he loves Harry. Do you think maybe yeah. McGonagall's told him stories about the kind of muggles that the Dursleys are? Probably. And so yeah. he doesn't have any time he's to probably, he probably asked be nice. her like yeah. who what are they like? That's true. Who yeah. have we sent him to? So I guess he's I mean, it's still not very nice, but I think he's yeah. just yeah, just being mean because he doesn't like him, probably. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the film, he does still say it though. But yeah, he just says it in a more in a, in a nicer way. way because he thinks it's Harry. Yeah. So he's like, "Oh, um, 
What did you you're say? A bit You've you're grown a bit. A bit. What is it? No, you're a, you're a bit bigger than I would have expected, particularly around the middle. Particularly <laughs> around the middle. <laughs> Which is <laughs> a very funny way of phrasing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I quite like that. Um, Me too. And it's the first time the line, the line, <laughs> Um, yeah. is said, which is you look a lot like your dad but you've got your mum's eyes yeah do you, like, do you reckon that um, this is the first time that Harry gets even an inkling of what his parents look yeah. like? yeah, probably, which is so sad, and uh, Hagrid probably yeah. doesn't know that that's what he's giving him in that moment, but he yeah. is yeah um, that's it's... true makes me so sad <laughs> it is heartbreaking and to know that he looks like his parents as well yeah that's what... and that's nice like yeah. he can kind of see his dad while, while looking, looking in the mirror oh, oh my gosh I'm gonna <laughs> cry <laughs> makes me think of yeah of George oh <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> um yeah so we spoke earlier about the shotgun in the book Hagrid ties the gun into a knot and throws it over the back of the sofa, I think, um, instead of mm. bending it upwards, like we see in the film. Mm. It's like um, when we talked about last episode where Uncle Ben is like, there's no such thing as magic. Mm. <clears throat> I love the rhythm of this, yeah. like, dry up, Dursley, you great prune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very good. I think, yeah. I, yeah, I, I also feel like that would be hard to visually do yeah and i always was confused about this like this is one of the ones that i think doesn't actually work in the book because mm. i'm like how would you even do that you've got the barrel yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case i i i think it works really well in the film yeah mm. um me too also hagrid can spell <laughs> <laughs> because he spells the words on Harry's cake correctly. And it's Ugh. it's not iced um, pink. It's just a normal super chocolatey cake with green icing. Yeah. Whereas in the film, it's pink icing and green writing. Mm-hmm. I... <laughs> um, every time I watched this as a kid, <laughs> when Hagrid says... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just don't know how I came to this conclusion when I was a child. <laughs> but I always thought that Hagrid says, it's not every day a young man turns a lemon now. <laughs> Instead of 11, like how? A lemon. <laughs> it's not every day a young man turns an orange, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Like in the film, you thought that's what he was saying. I thought that's genuinely you'd read what you were the saying. book. Oh no, you hadn't read the book. No, okay, I hadn't. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were saying you'd read the book and you just thought they'd changed no. it. <laughs> no, no, I thought yeah. in the film okay. he was like it was like a kind of Hagridism. <laughs> <laughs> it was just Hagrid being weird. <laughs> I love anyway. Uh, and is this like the first cake that Harry Harry's ever got for his birthday? Um I would say so. Did he have um, a birthday with his parents, though? He had one. Oh, that's true. So he's had he had he his first months. birthday. I mean, unless they didn't make him a cake, but I yeah, I feel like even though he's one, most people give them like some kind of sweet treat. Like Matilda, my daughter, got like an a slightly sweetened scone for her. <laughs> <laughs> what a treat! We're really weird with sugar and stuff, um, which. I think should not be as weird as it is, but anyway. Um, yeah. But they so, probably you know, most made a cake for, them, um, yeah. for Lily and James for them to eat, but just yeah, that's tarot. true. Um, huh. Yeah, so I never thought about that. It's probably the first one he remembers or the first one he's eaten. Yeah, yeah, um, which is also very sad. It's just a sad mm -hmm. book, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so Hagrid, after asking for a cup of tea, makes tea himself, <laughs> um, <laughs> and he also makes sausages. And like, how, how does he have a, and why does he have a teapot <laughs> yeah. in his coat and sausages? Yeah. Does he have them in like a, a packet? I'd hope so. 
<laughs> like, do wizards have like supermarket? Uh, that's a good point. Is there a well? No, I mean, I guess they just go to. Do, do they just go to super? Like, do they just go to Tesco? You know. I don't know. Probably. I don't know. Oh, doesn't Harry see that random wizard in a shopping? Oh center? no, in a in a supermarket. Yeah. Does yeah, he? Yeah. 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 yeah so I guess thing. they. Yeah. Just go shopping. That's true because d wizards still do just eat like normal, normal food. food. But then yeah. they also have the kind of extra things. But then that begs the question why can't Arthur Weasley count Muggle Money and lots of oh, other wizards as well? You know what? That's a very good point because wizards have <laughs> do they just no clue about Accio them from the <laughs> 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 <They> just steal? <laughs> yeah. I mean. That's a very good point. How do wizards do the weekly shop? <laughs> I've never thought about that in my whole life. No, me neither. But that's such a, that's such a valid question. Thank hmm. you. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I guess... I don't know. No, I think it's just one of these things yeah. that... It's just the thing that J.K. Rowling did not think yeah. about. Because <laughs> why would you? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have to think about that. No. But it is interesting. Yeah, um, it's something to think about. Um, yeah. <laughs> Vernon warns Dudley not to eat anything offered by Hagrid. He says, don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant <laughs> chuckled darkly. You're great pudding of a son, don't need fattening any more, Dursley. Don't worry. Which again? <laughs> more judgy Hagrid. <laughs> judgy Hagrid, sassy Harry and judgy Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I do you think know? that what you said before is more true now because, like, he's probably been waiting to insult these yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly sounds like yeah. it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the fact he's willing to turn him into a pig, he probably... I mean, even though he's yes. being defensive of Dumbledore, he probably, if it was just some random kid who offended Dumbledore, he probably wouldn't turn him into a pig. True. Because that's... Because he's not even allowed to use magic. Exactly. Exactly, He's not yeah. even meant to. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Thanks. <laughs> um, Hagrid is angry because Harry quote knows nothing about about anything. And Harry <laughs> says, "I know some things." He said, "I can, you know, do maths and stuff." <laughs> <laughs> so cute. The sweetest, most just. 11 year old thing i love the idea of yeah. him being kind of offended like uh yeah well, i do know some things <laughs> yeah. um but exactly i i always imagine harry being quite intelligent i imagine him of like the upper side of average, average. yeah yeah like mm. he's probably in he has to work a bit harder but not as hard as yeah, most he's still like a smart kid yeah I feel, especially in the muggle world, I feel like he's a lot smarter than he is in the wizarding yeah, world. Yeah, that, but that's, again, that's just because he, he's never been there. Yeah, um, exactly. And then here is where Hagrid tells Harry about his parents. Yay! I like, uh, I like this in the film a bit more, um, because it's like, this is where they're in like, what I assume is the leaky cauldron. Yeah. Um, in the film and it's just him and Hagrid whereas uh, I find it, it's weird to think that like the Dursleys are just kind of there and listening yeah. in it kind of feels like a private conversation yeah. it's quite a important conversation as well mm. when Harry begins thinking about all the times that strange things has strange things have happened to him because Hagrid says have you ever done anything you can't explain. Um, he thinks mm. of the ugly jumper growing too small so that he can't fit <laughs> it over his head, finding mm -hmm. himself on the roof when Dudley and his gang were chasing him, which he um, initially thinks is because he jumped and the wind <laughs> caught him. <laughs> so he yeah. ends up on the roof. Which... I mean, how old was he, like, to think uh, yeah. that? Well, I mean, it's like... Uh, all of these times, Stan Shunpike's uh, mm -hmm. observation of muggles, they don't, they don't nothing know now, nothing, do they? Do they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people will just have any reason not to not to see it. Not to believe, I don't know yeah. how much of that, though, is 
Harry being a child and how much of it is just him being a bit dim. <laughs> like, yeah, what? Yeah. He's not the brightest. Yeah. Like, in this kind of way. He's smart in <laughs> other ways, yeah. but he's not the brightest in this kind he's of way. He's just very innocent, I think. Yeah. Very, yeah. yeah. He just kind of goes for yeah. it. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> he's like, okay. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'm on the roof. Probably just the wind. <laughs> yeah. Um, was that like an early form of apparition? Do you think? Oh, I didn't think In about that. In which case, that is really impressive. That's probably because yeah. he just kind of mm. suddenly he's on the roof. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. I imagine that would make sense. Mm. He also thinks of his hair growing back the day after Petunia shaves it off, um, and <laughs> another cool bit of underage magic that we don't hear about is McGonagall as a child. She summoned toys off her shelves to her cot and made the family cat do her bidding and made her family's bagpipes play themselves. Yeah. What a Scottish it, it, it kind of reminds me of yeah. thing to <laughs> do. Yeah. That kind of weirdly enough reminds me of young young Tom mm, Riddle. That's what I was just Because he about. has like yeah making things because that's really powerful of her yeah. like as a toddler yeah. to already have control over your powers yeah. that's really rare mm. she's and i think the only times who the only times you see that written down who is it lily tom and mcgonagall now isn't it i think so yeah the only times yeah. we know of. probably dumbledore probably. i would assume yeah and probably grindelwald probably I never give mm. McGonagall credit for being an incredibly no. powerful witch. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget. Yeah, me too. I, I think it's interesting that the whole film, you don't actually see Harry perform any spells mm. not whatsoever. No apart magic. from when he's in Ollivander's and he kind of yeah. like does a bit uh, of swishy swish. So, yeah. <laughs> swishy yeah. swish. <laughs> Yeah, everyone yeah. says... I've heard a lot of people say that they like the first film because it's the most magical. Yeah, and there's, like, no it's magic. no magic. I think the most <laughs> magical, I'd probably say, is the fifth. Yeah, in terms of spellcasting. In terms yeah, of actual actually. magic that you see. Yeah, spellcasting. And maybe the seventh one. Yeah, oh, that's uh, true. Maybe. Like, like the like eighth one. Hogwarts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess people maybe mean that mean magical in a more metaphorical sense of nostalgic yeah. and cosy the, the atmosphere I yeah think. yeah yeah but, i don't know i i feel like it's odd that the first one like you say just yeah i mean my mum is one of those culprits and she says that the fourth one she feels is like the least magical of them all and i'm like it has a dragon in it. <laughs> yeah. It has and, mermaids. Yeah, and the whole duel between Voldemort and Harry at the end. Yeah, like, there's a sphinx. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, oh no, it's not, not in, in the, the film. film. Sorry, spoilers. I suppose, I suppose it's it's not as, it doesn't have as much magic as the book does. Yeah. But that's, we'll get to that's that, the yeah. same as all of them. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah. And then, as we said earlier, Hagrid um, gives <laughs> Dudley the tail after Vernon insults Dumbledore, whereas in uh, in the film he's um, he gives him the tail after he's eating the cake that he made mm. Harry, which is very rude. Yeah, <laughs> very rude. Yeah. Too. and Hagrid says that he meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose <laughs> he was so much like a pig anyway that there wasn't much left to do. <laughs> <laughs> so good so yeah, good a great line which i wish was um in the film but his yeah, aim wasn't that the would be really was... easy to put in yeah yeah and then another omission i suppose is that hagrid doesn't mention that he was expelled from hogwarts in the film yeah I did they guess... like randomly drop that in i in guess the it's when um in the second film when yeah when tom riddle's like you'll uh, what does he say? There's something for this Hagrid. You'll be expelled. Yeah, you'll be expelled for this Hagrid. Or um, you'll, something I can't like remember. that. I can't. But I, I kind of like that, though, to be honest. In um, I like that we know in the book that his umbrella is a wand that was broken in half. Yes. But I also do like that it's more of a reveal in the context of how it happened in the film. 
it's a bit more yeah. of a... Dun, dun, dun. That's true. Yeah, it's like too much of foreshadowing. Yeah. It's like these these are meant to be children's books after all, and the yeah. way that we're analysing them and the way other people are analysing them is not the what they were meant for. Yeah. At least, the, especially um, the first few. Yes, it, yeah. Um, so, like, I feel like this is way too way too soon to mention it I yeah I never thought about it mm. like that mm. okay I guess that leads us on to our next section which <laughs> is so beefy and we've already gone through a lot today mm-hmm. uh, but we go to Diagon Alley yes <laughs> um, <laughs> That sounded really weird. <laughs> um, I'm just really excited because this is mm-hmm. where most people, when they read the books, are like, oh, actual interesting things are yeah. happening now. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is strange because, like, that last chapter with Hagrid is, in my opinion, really interesting. And uh, all of it is interesting, but yeah. anyway. Yeah. Know, <laughs> we find Harry Potter interesting. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so... Um, after the massive revelation of you're a wizard, Harry, <laughs> Hagrid stays the night um, <laughs> instead of going straight away. Um, and when they wake up, well, when Harry wakes up, he thinks it's all a dream. Um, and he he uh, hears a loud tapping noise, um, and he's like, and there's Aunt Petunia knocking on the door. Harry thought his heart sinking. But he still didn't open his eyes. It had been such a good dream. Mm. <laughs> oh. Do you um, think, um, well, uh, did you think that it was a dream? Well, I had already read Oh, that's the true. Film. I always forget. Did I you? If, I can't remember, to be honest. I you was probably just didn't thinking, because I, I probably if... told you a lot. Um... That's true. I already knew that. Well, I guess people, if you, even if you read the blurb, you knew that he goes to wizard school. Uh, yeah, like the blurb is like, Harry Potter is a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a good thought, though. Like, I wonder if anybody has mm. ever thought that. Because I know some people who don't read the blurbs of books because they hate spoilers. That's that true. Much. I usually, re- well, I usually read like the first couple lines, then I'm like, okay, I think I'd like this. I'll stop reading. But yeah. Exactly. The blurb of Harry Potter is to the point. Yeah. Um, so when I love this description as well, like it's the same thing. Like J.K. Rowling is so good at describing things with few, very few words. It says, uh, so Harry sees that it's an owl rapping on the window, and he's like, obviously this is magical. So he scram- Harry scrambled to his feet, so happy he felt as though a large balloon was swelling inside, um, which is like. I can just feel it already in my heart, like, <gasps> that kind of lifting, like, ah, oh, kind of feeling. Mm. Yeah. Um, so then uh, when Harry asks, uh, so uh, they go, they get to Diagon Alley. It's basically all the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's very similar to the, to the book here yep. in the film. They get to the Diagon Alley and they get to Gringotts and Harry's like, they have wizards have banks and Hagrid says just the one <laughs> like really <laughs> yeah I one bank and well is this one UK wizard bank I assume but I think so because or, Hagrid is Hagrid British I guess he's yeah. British is it like a ch- is it like HSBC like a ch- <laughs> bring <God's laughs> chain I don't know <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think that's more likely that it's just Gringotts because it's run by goblins, which are not just a British thing. Yeah, I think they're goblins in other yeah. countries, aren't they? Yeah, so maybe there's a Gringotts in each country. There's probably not. Uh... Maybe like several in like places like um, China yeah. or like Japan, where it spans a very large. Mm-hmm. Although, like, you could probably just get a porky. That's true. That's true. Mm. I forget I that forget wizards, that wizards can, wizards. like, apparate to Diagon Alley <laughs> yeah, and just get some money. Apparating. Yeah. Okay. Um, we forget magic exists in, <laughs> in Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Hagrid slyly mentions that he wants a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> just casually, you know. Yeah. 
um, again, which is foreshadowing. Um, uh, remember this: if you are one of the watchers, uh, listeners who haven't read the books, this is a lovely bit of foreshadowing. Um, and in the film, this is where Voldemort is first mentioned, not um, when in the book Dumbledore and McGonagall mention him. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I, I love and hate in the film. Mm. Um, I think it adds more mystery to Voldemort's character, but at the same time, um, I do like that he's mentioned a bit more in the book. Yeah, it's a bit more of a constant presence, I suppose, in the book. Yeah. But mm. I feel like in the book, Voldemort is more of a human villain. And you, you see yeah. more of his past, I think, and you hear more about yeah. him and see him more. But in the films, he's much more mysterious and almost presented as a creature. Yes. In a way. Especially in the first mm, three. Mm. I guess not so much in the third one because he's not he's really not in the in third it. one. But yeah, up until four. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he is presented as a yeah more of a thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Mm. And then um, in the book. Uh, when Harry um, meets Quirrell in, um, I almost said three broomsticks, in the leafy cauldron, um, Quirrell doesn't have his turban on. Um, and this is actually really important um, because he is currently, at this time, not being possessed by Lord Voldemort, mm-hmm. um, which I had no idea about. Nope. Um, <laughs> Me neither. Do you think? <laughs> I always thought he was possessed, like, yeah. way before. Like, when yeah. they met. Yeah, much and, like, I forest. always thought he was possessed, uh, like, months before yeah. this point. Yeah. Do you think yeah. in the film they just decided that he would. He has already been possessed? Or do you think they. I think they just gave him a turban. For I sake think of they continuity. do decide that he's already possessed because he doesn't touch Harry. Ah, uh, yeah. He does but he that in the book. doesn't make any sense. He does, he, I think he gives Harry a handshake. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> um, let's see. It doesn't say. Oh, so. He could, he could have given him a handshake but and he could not have. You know. It just doesn't say. Okay. All right. Um, but I'm guessing not because it just says mm-hmm. a pale young man made his way forward very nervously. One of his eyes twitching was twitching. Yeah. Okay. But it, I feel like in that instance it was because Quirrell was like showing his nervous side, which is mm. a very real part of his character at this point. So it, it doesn't make any sense in the film because I feel like in the film it it does imply that he knows it's going to be dangerous. Yeah. But then in the end scene, he's like, "What is this magic?" Mm. So mm, Maybe... it's all a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe he was just thinking like, mm, maybe he'll know. Obviously, he mm. doesn't know about the Horcrux connection, but maybe he's thinking that. Well, because in the film, I feel like they've kind of decided that he's possessed at this point. So yeah. Maybe he's just thinking that Harry will somehow know, or that it might like physically hurt him, but just not to the extent that it does. In the film. Yeah. Yeah, that's maybe true. it's a continuity. Yeah, error. he's like fearful of Harry maybe yeah. being a, a powerful wizard because he. Just supposedly defeated Voldemort, which is a ridiculous notion, but anyway. <laughs> um, I feel like as well it works in the film that then you don't have to explain why he's wearing a turban. I mean, like, without right. saying, he's got Voldemort on the back of his head. Like in the book, um, it says that apparently he's wearing it now because mm-hmm. he picked it up somewhere or like uh, he's yeah. now protecting himself even more. Um, yeah, he said he'd got it I from think. someone on his travels. And then uh, the twins, friend George, yeah. uh, suggest that he's got garlic in it to ward away vampires. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it says that yeah. he like, emits a strange smell, which I'm like, <laughs> <"Are> you, what? <laughs> Why does Voldemort's face smell? Maybe he doesn't brush his teeth. Well, 
It would have to be Quirrell brushing his teeth, so maybe he doesn't want to... Yeah, does Voldemort eat? No. <laughs> I don't Quirrell think he does. just eats. He's just a yeah. parasite. Yeah, he gets all the strength from Quirrell. Oh, also I had the point of like, if he isn't being possessed, where the heck is Voldemort at this point? I feel where like is he? he's still... Well, do you mean like physically? Yeah, where? physically. Like, is he like possessing thoughts? an animal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess like, he's still possessing I guess, a snake. Yeah, and I guess it would make sense for him to be at Quirrell's house. <laughs> that just, just seems odd. <laughs> but yeah, odd uh, yeah, probably. So in in the film, you can see Ian Hart's hair. In Ian Hart plays Quirrell. You can see his hair poking out from his turban, which is either <laughs> I said this is either a mistake or Voldemort was taking part in Movember a month early. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Maybe, I, I mean, he's an evil wizard, that. but maybe he also supports, you know, promoting men's mental health. Who knows? You know, <laughs> everyone's got their... I mean, he is a very nervous person, yeah. so maybe... <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Quirrell Mort is really <laughs> thriving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so so then they eventually get to Gringotts. Um and there's a lovely little bit where um, you, there's no way for them to put this in the film. Like, you can't just, like, focus on this. Um, but there's a sign um, over in over the doorway of Gringotts. And I'm just going to read it because it's brilliant. Um, and J.K. Rowling adds a lot of these, like, little rhymes in. Um, it says... Enter, stranger, but take heed of what awaits the sin of greed. For those who take but do not earn must pay most dearly in their turn. So if you seek beneath our floors a treasure that was never yours, thief, you have been warned, beware, of finding more than treasure there. Mm. I like as well that that slightly foreshadows to the final book slash yeah, I agree. film. <laughs> then we, we come to um, some of the shops. Um, so that they're all kind of mentioned in the film, like showing the shop headings. Um, but this scene in particular is, is just completely, uh, gotten rid of. Um, so Harry goes to get his robes at Madame Malkin's and, uh, this is actually where he meets Draco for the first time in the books. Um, and it says that he was reminded of Dudley when he was, um, when he met Draco for the first time, which I find really interesting that Hagrid... <laughs> He's <so> confused. <laughs> but Harry would make that connection. I suppose it's just the sense of entitlement. Yes, you know? I think that is... I think that is... And thinking they're the best. Uh, what it is. Yeah, but I think on the whole, Draco is very different yeah. to Dudley. But they do have the same kind of brattishness. Mm-hmm. You are right. On first impressions. They have a similar yeah. um, outlook. I yeah, suppose. yeah, that's true. Like, uh, I deserve yeah. everything, everything mm-hmm. I want, um, and no less. So Hagrid comes to the outside of the window. Um, and look, peeps in at the two boys, and Draco says, "I say, look at that man." <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. Bit. I say, old chap. Um, and Harry is so pleased to finally know something because Draco's good, like going on about Quidditch and all mm-hmm. of this stuff. That Harry's like, "Oh gosh, I know nothing about this mm-hmm. world." Um, and Harry says, that's Hagrid, he works at Hogwarts. And Draco says, he's a sort of servant, isn't he? And Harry said, he's the gamekeeper. He was, and then it says that Harry was liking the boy less and less every second. And I just, I kind of am mad at Draco because I really like Draco as a character, but only later on, like... The first impression he gives is so mm-hmm. poor. Like even even if Harry was a dark yeah. wizard and wanted to be in mm-hmm. Slytherin, this first impression is just yeah. terrible. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is, if if Harry had have been put in Slytherin, everyone says, "Oh, 
do you think they would have been friends, you know, this, that. But I think people forget that there are nice, cool, chill people in Slytherin. <laughs> it's not yeah, just evil. Yeah, people. and like, they forget that this has happened. Like, you, you think that Harry was put mm. in Slytherin, but it's after this yeah. has already happened. And he knows that Malfoy favours mm. Slytherin. Um, and he's like, ugh, I don't want to be friends with that kid. He reminds yeah. me of Dudley. Like, he reminds me of the worst person of yeah. my age yeah. that I know. Um, yeah, so I really, I agree that I don't understand why people, like, always speculate mm. that. Because it's really Baby obvious, Dudley. as you said. I suppose, I suppose maybe maybe it's people who, who have only seen the films. And so you don't quite get yeah. how much he Yeah, <laughs> I, I do think that Draco and Harry, if Draco was a nicer mm. person, they do have the same kind of yeah. sense of humour. But it's just that first impression that he's not going to get back from. Mm. Being compared to Dudley, there's no, mm. there's no coming back from yeah. that. I also think it's interesting because this is Harry's first impression of yeah. Slytherin. Of someone who wants yeah. to be in Slytherin. Yeah. That's true. And like... This, the stigma that is around Slytherin is just really mm. unfortunate. I mean, they kind of, in the in this time um, anyway, they kind of deserve it. <laughs> Most of I them, like, like, like the heir of Slytherin, his history, and like then Voldemort, uh, not the heir of Slytherin, sorry, mm-hmm. Slytherin himself, um, his history is yeah. not good. Voldemort is the heir of Slytherin. His history, obviously, <laughs> is not yeah. good. So at this point, Slytherins, uh, I think, quite deservedly don't have a bad rep, but I, I feel sorry for the other Slytherins who people. are all yeah. right people. I suppose yeah. the, the traits of Slytherin being ambitious and being uh, like putting yourself first are often associated with like evil Negative. people. Yeah, yeah, evil people, yeah. But I, I've i always quite related to that side of Slytherin. Like, I've always thought, um, like, when I think I, I'm good at something, so, like, at Christmas, I was like, I really like wrapping presents and I'm good at wrapping presents. So I immediately thought I could make a business where I wrap other people's presents for them and mm-hmm. ask for money. And I was, like, trying to work out how I could, like, use this to my advantage. Yeah. And I feel like that's quite a Slytherin yeah. thing to do. And I'm always doing that. Like, how could I turn this into a way that I can Benefit. get yeah. gain? Um, yeah. And I feel like but the more... Um, what is the extreme mm. side of Slytherin is that you do anything, anything to, to get yeah. what you want. Mm. Yeah. So it is sad that that's his first impression of Slytherin. Um... And then the, the other schlop, schlops, <laughs> the other shops that he goes to um, are Flourish and Blots, where he sees a book um, of dark curses and Har- Hagrid has to uh, drag him away and Harry's like, I was trying to find out how to curse Dudley. <laughs> um, they go to a potion supply shop, which... Written that down. What is that called? Um, oh, I've just seen a quote that Hagrid says, because ha- Harry also has a bad rep from Draco about Hufflepuff as well, because Draco says that Hufflepuff is a really lame house, which a lot of people think. And Harry says, uh, uh, Harry says, I bet I'm in Hufflepuff. Said Harry <laughs> gloomily, and Hagrid says, Better Hufflepuff oh. than Slytherin. So he is. I mean, it's not just Draco. He's getting the idea from. From Hagrid and Draco yeah. and later Ron. Everyone. That, this is a it's a bad yeah. place to be in. Um oh no, it just says they went to a potion mm. shop. It just says um it, it doesn't even say that they went to a potion shop, it just says Hagrid wouldn't let Harry buy a solid gold cauldron either. It says pewter on your list. Um etc etc. So it doesn't even mention any name. Um I'm just trying to remember uh, I was trying to remember um what the set said but I, mm, I feel like it oh, I feel like it mentions it in later books but oh, we'll get there <laughs> they visited the apothecaries as well um, which Harry finds really fascinating um, but it, it smells horrible <laughs> 
It says it smells like a mixture of bad eggs and rotten cabbages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously they go and see, um, they go and get Hedwig um, and all the rest of it. But I feel like all of these shops add so much meat yeah. to the story, which makes it feel a lot more, yeah. a lot more real. I think the films mm-hmm. also do a very good job of, of that, making it feel real, given the limited time span. Um, with all yeah. the detail. Yeah, you got to give yeah. them credit. On the, on the shop yeah. front and everything. And even inside. Yeah, like they have Madame Malkins' shop front, even though... Yeah, even though... They don't include it. They don't it. have the scene. And they've got, like, they've got everything inside it, all the, all the um, uniforms, and also even the costumes of the people shopping there. It just feels very yeah. suddenly magical. You go from... Yeah. You know, I mean, we said that the films don't quite establish how boring the Dursies are, but I feel like just the shock of going from, visually going from a very generic looking boring house. That's true. Suddenly to yeah. this. But like anything would look boring compared yeah, to that's true. that. <laughs> but the stark contrast, I think it's very, yeah, very well done. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, they go to get Hedwig after this. Um, I find it quite interesting that Hedwig's name is never mentioned in this film. Um, it is mentioned in a deleted scene, um, which is a really good deleted scene, um, where Neville comes in with a leg locking curse. Um, and I mention it in a later chapter, so I won't go into too much I detail, but it's a great scene. I don't think I've ever seen that. You pro- I didn't think I had either, but you probably have, just don't remember okay. it. Um, because it's quite a famous one, but yeah. maybe, maybe you haven't. Hmm. I'll try and find it after this. I'll report back. And uh, so, yeah, because they deleted that scene, Hedwig's name is never mentioned. And obviously, because they can't add so much detail, they don't mention where Harry got his name. Uh, her name, sorry. Um, he got her name from reading um, A History of Magic. Who do you um, think? And it just says it's a name who do you th- that he likes. I was likes. just going to say, who do you think Hedwig is or was? I feel like uh, I know this, no. <laughs> but I can't quite That's remember. Um, uh, it's just mentioning all the places that Hedwig is in the film. Ah, mm. Hedwig name on Wikipedia. It's a Germanic name consisting of two elements, Hadu battle, combat, and wig to fight or duel. Hmm. Do you think it's a real person? There are lots of Hedwigs. But in, um, do you think this Hedwig is, do you think it's like a, like a real, um, a real Like a, real like person? a Merlin type of yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, someone who may have existed but, mm-hmm. but is not who they say they are. Yeah. It just says there's loads of, like, rulers that are Hedwig. Uh, so, I mean... For, uh, I mean, I know names don't always um, mean the people who, I don't know how to phrase this, but the people who have the names don't always have the attributes that the name means, if that makes sense. But from the mm. meaning of it, it, I imagine it being like a warrior. That's true, like battle, combat, fight, duel. Yeah. Um, the word duel I mean, as well. Even the nature of um, Sad Tweet, Hedrick's death. Mm. Um, it's in the middle of a battle. Yeah, um, protecting someone. Protecting yeah. Harry. So yeah, mm. yeah. Very so sad. I guess that um could be it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> um, I feel like it was something really interesting and magical. But anyway, mm. so when Harry buys his wand, Hagrid is with him because they've already bought Hagrid. Uh, Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. <laughs> Hedwig. <laughs> Saying Hagrid and Hedwig in the same sentence is not it's like easy. A really concerning <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ew. Um, and uh, I love the little detail that Hagrid breaks a chair <laughs> um, when Ollivander pops up because um, uh, Ollivander makes Hagrid jump. And then in the book, Harry actually tries loads of ones before his chooses him. Um, And Ollivander calls him a tricky customer, which must have felt really great for Harry. (laughs) Do you think he thought that it was just 
just none of them were going to work. He must have thought that yeah, eventually. Yeah, that's what I um, I would think mm. anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I like that it mentions in the book that the more of ones Mr. Ollivander pulls from the shelves, the happier he seems to become. <laughs> Do you think I like the idea of him kind of suspecting from the beginning that the twin core would be the one, but he just wanted the drama of it all, and so he was pulling out all the ones and yeah. Know. I d- I do think deal. that he does like yeah that he does like that kind yeah. of um, especially for Harry Potter yeah he's probably trying to draw he's like it out. I gotta make this really cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when Harry tries the ones um the ones that doesn't don't the ones that don't work in the book don't produce any magic whatsoever. <laughs> Whereas in the film, they wreck Ollivander's shop, mm. um, which it really annoys me that he doesn't repair it in the film. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I find it really amusing, though. I, the idea of Harry, this dramatic moment, and Harry waves his wand, and then there's just silence for a few seconds. Yes. Yeah. I just find that yeah. hilarious. Um, but obviously, cinematically, it's a lot better to have stuff exploding. Yeah, it's a lot more exciting. Yeah, and it kind of so, like, shows it especially. not working. Or it, it, like, it not working rather than it just actually not doing anything. Just nothing happening. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, it, it, it's a better explanation mm-hmm. without actually explaining it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I also said that I really think that in the film you do get... Um, much more of a sense of like wow this is like the one or this is like a really special moment because of john williams mm-hmm. here like um i always think that the the fan kind of ruffling his hair is kind of goofy yeah. <laughs> and like the light and everything yeah it's a bit a bit cliche yeah a bit much. Uh, but the music here is just yeah. It's the start of the show. Then, <laughs> so he gets his wand, everything's fine, and then like how he, how Ollivander explains everything is is very similar. I I like how similar they they do it. And then they uh, they go back, and after going to Diagon Alley in the film, Harry goes straight to the Hogwarts Express, which a it doesn't make sense because it's his birthday, it's July thirty first. So what happens to the whole month of August? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never give that much thought, but that's no, me neither. A very good point. They just spend a month in Diagon Alley. Maybe, maybe they maybe stayed just at the Hogwarts Leaky Cauldron. starts earlier. What did you say? Maybe they stayed at the Leaky yeah, Cauldron. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe they did, but... maybe he did go to Hogwarts and they just let him like I don't know because <laughs> maybe he stayed in Hogsmeade. No, it's just. It's... I always took it in the film as like. He just does go straight to Hogwarts, like, yeah. and Hogwarts just starts earlier or something. Or just, it was a little bit of a continuity, not continuity, yeah. but just a mistake. Just trying to be quicker. Yeah. We're going to say this a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to be quicker. But in the in the book, he, he um, stays there for a whole month. But before this, to get back, um, it... it Explains it in a lot more detail, obviously. Um, they go on the train, um, and Hagrid just kind of leaves him in the station. <laughs> um, and I I don't know, like, how does Harry get back to Driv- Privet Drive? He does does get he on, even go back there? He does get does on the train, the doesn't he? The I, thought he? I thought he's on the train, and then he looks out because he wants to watch Hagrid as the train leaves, but then he's suddenly not there. Um, because he presumably... Hagrid helped Harry onto the train that would take him back to the Dursleys, then handed him an envelope. The train pulled out of the station and Harry wanted to watch Hagrid out of sight until he rose in his seat. He rose in his seat and pressed his nose against the window, but he blinked and Hagrid had gone. Yeah, you're right. I only know that. But like, it still begs the question, where does Harry go? How does he know to go to where he goes? Like, how does he know to either go to the Hut on the Rock or go to Privet Drive? Is he a homing pigeon? (laughs) (laughs) Is that his animagus? 
<laughs> because like this comes up several times and the main other one is like how do they find the hogwarts express when they fly the ford anglia yeah, they say they just head north and just yeah to see it that's but... so vague yeah. like a hogwarts like a train a train track is not 50 meters wide yeah. like it's it's the the width of a maybe train. two tables pushed together yeah, yeah. a train <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a but anyway we're not talking about that yeah. um, how like where do you think he goes first of all i think he goes back to okay to drive and then how do you think he knows how to get there do you mean like from the train station yeah, he arrives like, at. He's he never goes anywhere with the Dursleys. They fob him off every time they go on holiday, every time they go anywhere. Mm. Maybe somehow uh Dumbledore or some other wizard has contacted the Dursleys and said, like, you need to pick him up at the train station. And they've just been so mm. scared that Either they do. threaten him or something. Yeah. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Or just been yeah, like, yeah, that's true. I think you should probably go to this train station, and they're like, okay, because they're just terrified yeah. At this oh, point. and don't even say Harry's there. They just tell yeah. them go this random one. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> maybe there's wizards there, um, secretly guiding Harry, <laughs> like putting up, putting up like fake signs like Privet Drive this way. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry's just like, oh, perfect, a nice handy sign. <laughs> yeah, cause like, for me, when I go around England, I don't know about any other countries, but England's signage is awful. Yeah. Like, when you when you try and get off of a roundabout, there's hardly anywhere in any roundabout is the, is the destination you actually want to go to mm. on the sign that is... The, that is on the exit mm-hmm. and the same goes for like street signs yeah uh, for for pedestrians as well mm-hmm. so like and then like how far does he have to walk i i, I have so many questions <laughs> about how like and so i do think actually you're probably right that the dursleys probably somehow have yeah. to go and get I, I mean that seems like the most sensible logical option. yeah the most logical yeah. option yeah. anyway and now over to Lucy to explore the Marauders map. All right. So, um, at number t- number forty-two, <laughs> that was a great start. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> number number forty-two of the Bull's Head Passage at Lad and Ladenhall Market. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you got it. Ladenhall Market is an optician's called the Glass House, which was used as the entrance to the Leaky Cauldron. Mm. which i think i think it was a good i think it was a good choice although i do think i prefer it in the third film oh is it different in the third film yeah it's more of a kind of back alley oh i don't know i don't know if maybe that was just yeah i don't know if that was just maybe he was coming around the back entrance or something but that's what i I think it's a bit more mystic yeah maybe but i i i think it's a bit more i don't know yeah like cooler yeah yeah, yeah it's secreted. more like underground yeah secreted. yeah um, uh, but i the, really like as soon as you said that it was an opticians i can totally see that as an opt as an opticians opticians yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. i think it's painted like a kind of royal blue color as well it's really cool oh cool yeah, oh, in the film, isn't it's... it like black yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's just black um I don't know if it's still an optician's as of like 2010, I think, which is <laughs> the book I got this information from. Um, uh, it's an optician's. Okay. I think it still is. Anyway, uh. um, the exhibition hall at Australia House in London was used for the room inside Gringotts Bank, lined with the desks of the goblins. Oh. Which, it's an incredible location. Just perfect. Yeah. In every way. Yeah. <laughs> That's like exactly. Like, I have, I'm very impressioned from the films. Is that the right mm. word? I, 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 I don't so. know. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a lot of the film-isms, like movie-isms in my head because yeah. I watch them first, yeah. most of them. Mm. Um, 
but that one like some of them still i imagine them differently because they're so different in the books right, like yeah. harry it's just so different yeah. how he looks and acts really but um that one is just perfect it is it is spot on yeah i believe as well they built a set i mean they must have built a set for the um the uh, the eighth movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, and that set, as you know very well, is now at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. Yes. So hopefully oh. we'll be seeing that at some point soon. Yes. It looks so beautiful. I'm going to cry. Oh, um, we need to go soon. It, it looks so cool. Also, the exterior of the building, Australia House, is reminiscent of Gringotts, is <laughs> Gringotts entrance. So it probably was used for inspiration, I'd imagine, mm. with the yeah. um, the pillars. It's got a very similar vibe. Yeah, I like the the wonkiness of the pillars. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it looks like it could just fall over, like the yeah. burrow. Yeah, yeah, like it's very held magical. up by magic. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The production team began looking for a location in London where they could shoot Diagon Alley scenes. But they soon realised that although many quirky Dickensian streets exist in the UK, there would always be something modern or muggle to shatter the illusion. Mm, that's so true. Stuart Craig and the production team began building Diagon Alley from scratch as a set. Mm. Um, there are a lot of um, quirky little streets in the UK that all claim to be the inspiration for Diagon Alley. Yeah. And I don't know if any of them are, but... Um, it's like there those, are... all those cafes and libraries like around the world claiming to be the first place that J.K. Rowling wrote the books. Yeah. <laughs> and I only just yeah. realised really recently that none of them are true. <laughs> <laughs> she started reading them in her, writing them in her apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And if they were true Harry Potter fans, they would know that. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm not a true Harry Potter fan. <laughs> How could you? Uh... <laughs> um yeah i've i've been to a few of the streets actually that claim that a few of them are in edinburgh because oh really did she used to live in edinburgh yes i think so yeah i think so i mean that would still make sense live in edinburgh M maybe I, I don't know she definitely <laughs> with fake fans. but yeah there's there's the, there's a cafe that is is kind of the cafe that she wrote Harry Potter, the or at least it claims to house, be. The is that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I stood outside it, but it was Me really too. busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, had, yeah, the I had a picture cool. outside of it. Oh yeah, I I think I probably did take a picture, or maybe I didn't because I was too embarrassed. But, <laughs> uh, something I regret, but um, <laughs> oh, yeah, well. I think it was a good. I think it was a good idea to build it as a set. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there maybe are some it means we can um, visit it. villages that are still like they're in their original form so they don't have any lamps yeah. they don't have yeah. any um like cables running through so like the mm -hmm. houses don't have any internet they have to have mobile internet etc etc mm -hmm. um and a lot of people use those locations to film but yeah. they're very like quaint in a cute yes. kind of way yeah and I feel like Diagon Alley isn't quaint it's like no, it's, magnificent it's like kitschy Almost. yeah it's like yeah it's kind of ugly <laughs> yeah it makes it so magical yeah yeah like the weasley's house like i want that house but at the same time it's just so much <laughs> there's just so much in it <laughs> yeah and it's so much like clutter there's just stuff everywhere yeah yeah it's yeah. very i mean like we said about gringotts and like the burrow it's it's like it's just holding itself together with yes magic. yeah it's a mess <laughs> yeah but yeah. that makes it just really cool yeah and like i said it means we can go visit it <laughs> yeah i like like every time s spoiler alert for the studio tour every time we go to the studio tour and walk through that set like i feel like i see something new yeah um and I, we've said a number of times i would go and pay extra money to be able to clean behind that set <laughs> Because yes. I want to be in that set, and it's I would really annoying that it's clean. so dusty now. <laughs> yeah. But they said that it's too delicate, really, to to, to clean. But yeah. ugh, I want to go do it. Yeah. I want to see inside those shops. Yeah, that's why I want to go to Universal Studios. Yes, you can just go shopping, <sighs> even though it's not the real set. It's, ah, 
I think I would just pass out. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. No. <laughs> if we ever go, we need to bring the other. Like, if I go, I need to bring you. Yeah. And if you yeah, go, you need absolutely. to bring me. <laughs> yeah. You can be, like, my emotional support. Yeah. You can catch me when I faint. Yeah. We can just lean against each other. Yeah. It's, <laughs> we'll it's stay like up. You, you holding me together when I was, like, in bits at the... Um, and then i made you cry (laughs) that's the problem people make people crying makes me cry because i wasn't that emotional i was just like like, you were fine you were like this is cool and i was like (laughs) it's the link between two worlds and then i was like you're so right why aren't i crying (laughs) yeah oh dear anyway (laughs) anyway (laughs) yeah um, so then, after buying Harry a burger, Hagrid leaves Harry at Paddington Station. Um, but this scene is not in the movie. Oh, I wish it was in this movie. I wish it was. I love the Im- imagery of, of Hagrid <laughs> sitting on like a plastic McDonald's yeah. chair. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> of course, there is another very important train station in the first Harry Potter film. Dun-dun. But I'll be discussing that and more magical places when we explore the Marauders map in the next episode. Mm. So that concludes this episode of Potter Watch from page to screen. Keep twiddling those dials. Keep each other safe. Keep faith. Good, Good night. night. It's working. Okay, yes. <laughs> it's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really conscious of my mouth sounds now. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I do that with now asthma. I, can hear I get like sound. self-conscious asthma. And then when I realise that I don't have my inhaler on me, I get an asthma oh, attack. Oh, because I don't oh have my inhaler on me and I'm panicking. <laughs> That's not very good. <laughs> it's not very good.